All right, guys, another good question that I had from you was how does the body adapt metabolically to different types of training and what role does T3 and T4, the thyroid hormones, have on metabolism? So let's go to the second part first. T3 and T4 are the major regulatory hormones on effectively your resting metabolic rate. This is going to be things like affecting your resting heart rate. If you're hyper, it's going to be high. If you're hypo, it's going to be low. How quickly your GI is digesting foods and breaking them down. If you're a little too hypo, it's going to be slower digestion. You might have some issues with potential constipation. Too high, you're going to be running things through your body a little too aggressively. You might have a little malabsorption, you might have some diarrhea. And I mean, that's what we're talking about people that have like legitimate thyroid disorders. Now, obviously, that does affect us. It does affect a slice of the population that is worth understanding that these are things that can occur. And if that does happen, you have to be hyper, it's really hard to gain weight. You're chewing through calories at a faster rate. You're recovering arguably not just fast, but too quickly. And so it's really hard to gain any weight. And if you're hypo, your tissues are metabolically going a lot slower. It's you're recovering a lot slower. And because of that, turns out you're not going to have the same type of changes that you would look for otherwise. Now, how the body adapts metabolically to different types of training. Now, it's a really wide thing. That can be obviously anything from lifting weights to yoga to long distance running to MMA. It sounds like everything's in that bucket. It's going to adapt both generally and specifically. The two general components of your cardiovascular system, which is a big part of feeding the metabolic beast, is going to be your heart and then your blood. Your heart pumps blood everywhere, your blood goes everywhere. Then you have your specific parts, which is going to be your capillaries, your vasculature. So these are gonna be your arteries, go to arterioles, go to capillaries, go to venules, go to veins, goes back to the vena cava, into the arc, we're not around, and then we go through the aorta. Now, your vasculature of the muscles and the fibers inside of those muscles you're gonna use are going to increase in number and ability to send blood to those individual fibers. So they're gonna be able to keep up the work rates they are trying to do. Now, whatever energy system, so are we talking about the ATP PCR system, the anaerobic glycolysis, the aerobic glycolysis system and beta oxidation, whichever of those we are emphasizing the most, because remember, we're never using one in a vacuum. They're all working together. The key is which are we effectively focusing on the most? that energy system is going to improve. Now, if we're talking about things like anaerobic glycolysis, ATP, PCR, we're gonna increase our storage of phosphocreatine, of glucose, we're really talking glycogen inside of our muscles. And we're gonna increase the enzymes related to those processes so it can run a little faster. Now, when we're talking about aerobic metabolism, now we're gonna be increasing the amount of mitochondria inside of those cells. We're gonna be increasing the amount of enzymes related to the citric acid cycle, the electron transport chain. And so that's gonna work a little bit faster and a little bit more efficiently in those individual muscle fibers that we're utilizing. That's the big caveat. So we can go and train with hours upon hours of rock climbing. But if our goal is to be better at swimming, we're using the same muscle but we're not necessarily using the same fiber with the same firing patterns, with the same energetic demands, that's going to allow us to really get a lot more improvements in our performance. So it's not just the muscle fiber or muscles we're using, it's the fibers with inside of that muscle that matters. So remember, we're going to adapt generally, meaning our heart and our blood, but then specifically, in those capillaries and those muscles we're using and the muscle fibers inside of those muscles we're using for whatever exercise we happen to be undertaking. So thank you guys for listening and have a great day. Bye-bye.